Vegas. I'm your rematch with Style Live from Las Vegas in the Amp TV studio, WAMP.TV. Today's show is brought to you by our friends with Vante Band. You're going to hear all about them in just a moment, folks. Check them out at VanteBand.com. That's VanteBand.com, V A N T E Band.com. And we've got the guys from Vante Band here. They're going to talk to you. In fact, first, we want to welcome everybody in on our CBS, NBC, and Fox Sports affiliates from coast to coast. And of course, Magic 97.9 FM right here in Las Vegas. We can't forget them and all of our CBS, NBC, and Fox Sports affiliates from Coast to Coast Hotel Television and over a half a million rooms, as well as Cox, Comcast, Spectrum, Frontier, and Wild Cable TV. And a big welcome in to everybody that's joining us. That would be Brian, Scott, and Rev from Vontae Band. Yes! Hey, hey, hey. All right, we're going to go around the horn here, and, and we're going to let Rev introduce himself real quick because we had some technical issues during our testing. Let's see if we can get this thing right. Hey, I'm Rev Jones, bass player for Vontae. Michael Shaker Group, Mountain, Steel Heart, Fuel, anybody else that has any money to pay me. <laughs> Steel Heart, Fuel, and anybody else that wants to pay him too, he says. All right. And Brian. Hi, my name's Brian Truck. I'm lead, lead vocalist. Uh, do a little bit of guitar here on the album. Uh, you might know me from Cyclone Temple, Hammer On, uh, Elliot Waits on Shooting Hemlock. All right. And finally, on guitar, we have Scott. Hey, Scott and McClellan here, guitar player for Vontae. Basically, uh, I've worked with Cemetery Gates, the Pantera Tribute, Domination, Breed of Aggression. Um, basically, I've worked with many others in my solo projects and Tony Martin of Black Sabbath. And uh, here to say hello to y'all. All right. All right. That's good stuff, folks. Of course, you're going to want to check them out. We're going to say VanteBand.com a million times in this show today, only because we can, if you know what I mean. <laughs> so nonetheless, now, so these guys have kind of played everywhere. And, you know, we, we did a sort of a sound check previously, and we sort of did a check segment just to see what would happen here. And of course, it was chaos, only because I was driving the bus. And when it comes to, yes, there's explosions. Thank you. Much appreciate that, Brian. So when there are explosions and chaos on camera and, well, let's face it, on microphone, how do we work through these? So let's just start there. Brian, I'm going to ask you, as you're going through all the songs that you have sang and played, et cetera, Rev, we're going to get to you on this, too, because you've got an encyclopedia of songs in your head, just like you do, Scott. But how many times have you messed up? Be honest. It's OK. It's just it's just us here. How many times have you forgotten words? Or you're like, oh, I forgot that riff or something. More times than I can count. <laughs> All right, I mean, give me the last instant when it happened. And what did you do? When was the last time it happened? And what did you do to get over it? So maybe the audience uh, didn't actually, know. I was singing on stage with Dave Ellison from Megadeth. And uh, I was singing Anarchy in the UK the cover they did and somehow i forgot part of a verse i don't know it was it was just one of those nights you know and dave kind of looked over at me like what and i was like uh, uh and then all of a sudden boom, it just came back sometimes you just have that momentary brain fart that comes out of nowhere i can't describe why it happens it just does occasionally but <laughs> <laughs> come on that's, that's a great question when's the last time you were asked that on any program of any kind come on uh, probably never but it's kind of, yeah. That's good it's stuff. Fun. Scott, what about you playing? How many times have you, you thought you were playing one thing? You're like, oh, no, I'm supposed to be playing this well, instead. I, when that's happened to me, it's like well, usually when I, was doing a, I was doing a Pantera show, and it was kind of off because I, we didn't get together for a while. You know, and sometimes you're playing one solo from one song, and then you're like, wait a minute, I'm supposed to be doing that on the other song. <laughs> and, and, I mean, that, that's happened, you know, like, you know, but when you do, I write millions of songs all the time. So it was one of them things like, whoops, let's get back on planet Earth here, you know, and I, I escaped a few times, but not too many. I, I try not to like drink on stage and stuff because I think that lets down your bandmates and uh-huh. stuff like that. So yeah, it has to do with having an adult beverage. All right, Rev, because you, <laughs> Probably, you, you yeah. played so much. Uh, unfortunately, I've never had that problem. Uh, the closest, Rev to, that would, yeah. <laughs> the closest, closest to that would be, uh, I used to play in a, a Kiss tribute band, as Gene Simmons, obviously. 
you can tell by my hair. Uh, yeah. And so I got up one night, this, uh, I don't even remember who it was. It was a national band that was playing. And they had told him that I played in a uh, his tribute band. So they called me up to play bass and sing. And I get up there and we start doing uh, God of Thunder. And my brain just froze. It was like, you got something on me. <laughs> and I, it took me it took me probably about a verse before i even locked in on things that sounded right and those guys are just looking at me like oh yeah sure he was in a tribute man <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> i would imagine Sorry. that it happens I, guys i would imagine it happens more times than not because well, i mean look, somebody, whether, listen whether it's music no. We see this in sports all the time. People will announce the wrong things. Sometimes they even yeah. announce the wrong oh, rules in sports too. Oh right? yeah. Well, I I I did a show one time uh, in San Antonio with, and just I got up and jammed with these guys for a full set, and we did some MSG and some UFO and you know uh, stuff from bands that I played in, and we start playing something, and they start going to a different part which is actually what's on the record. But the whole time I played with Michael Shaker group, we never did that version. We only did this other version. So it never even popped in my head that it goes to this part. And I'm just like, what are you guys doing <laughs> on that stage? You know, <laughs> so still it wasn't my fault. <laughs> okay. So Brian, <laughs> Brian, let me ask you this. Brian, if you've been on stage and let's say you're on a tour, right? And it's like, Thank you, Chicago, and you're in Milwaukee or something. How many times has that happened? <laughs> I don't think that's ever happened to me. <laughs> oh, oh, come on. Oh, come on. I, may have, I may have woke up on the tour bus thinking I was in a different city, but I, I never announced it on stage like that, no. But right. I have, have been in places where I think I'm somewhere else, sure. <laughs> <laughs> and that's without having a drink. Scott? What do you right. got? Have you ever had that happen? Absolutely not. Really? No, man. Somebody, no somebody wouldn't say there. that. Can we see the commercials on TV and stuff? Somebody's got to. All right, Riff, have you ever been on a, a stage where somebody said the wrong city? Oh, yeah. A lot of times. That's why somebody <laughs> smart has a little sheet of paper <laughs> next to their microphone that says Wednesday. Your name and it still it still doesn't matter because if you get somebody like Ron Burgundy up there, they're going to read whatever you print. So if somebody printed out the wrong day, they're going to that'd say, be a great that'd be a great president uh, a custom for the president. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, where you at? I don't know. You know, yeah. <laughs> and then you go around and shake somebody's hand. You go to shake, and there's nobody there, if you know what I mean. I, I'm not <laughs> trying to slam. I stay out of politics, but yeah. it is a funny thing. Yeah. Come on, that's yeah. funny. But you're, hey, this, this, but you're this, not this a music confused, show. Not. Folks, listen, it's a sports show, but we're featuring a really cool band because, listen, when you go to stadiums, and maybe it's a TV timeout or something like that, or it's in between periods or between halves or, or quarters, whatever, what do they do? They play music. All of this stuff, there's music. And so, Listen, these guys are climbing the charts right now. I think they're number 18 on Billboard, if I'm not mistaken. Is that right, Brian? Yes, sir. Yep. That's All correct. Right. So climbing the charts. You're going to hear their music and pick your favorite hockey, basketball, football, baseball game, et cetera, maybe in between innings at a ball game. You never know, folks. And guess what? You may see these guys somewhere around town here in Vegas or around the world, if I'm not mistaken. All four of us are in four different places. Where is everybody right now? Rev, where are you at? Uh, Norman, Oklahoma. Brian? I'm up in Door County, Wisconsin. Oh, that's that's a great place if you want cherry pie. And they have a, a cherry pit spitting uh, arena, so to say, there. And Scott, where are you at? I'm in Central Illinois, the Twin Cities, Bloomington Normal. Oh, wow. Hey, I'm last- the other Twin I- All right, so you're in the real Twin Cities, and the ones in Minnesota don't count, right? Well, they've had their problems. <laughs> <laughs> the, only, the only time they count is when they're coming out to see you if you're touring over there. Hey, guys, here's what I'm going to do for the last so one minute of this segment. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to – play more of that song that we started with. And of course that would be going with the flow. If I'm not mistaken, is that right? Right on. All right, here we go, guys. We're going to go to commercial break right through this folks. So don't go anywhere. 
Jack is. Did you ever go buy a pack of Cracker Jack thinking you'd get a prize and find no prize <laughs> in the box? Here's the pitch. That might not sound important to some people, but when, you, when you're a little kid, especially from a humble origin, and they cheat you out of a prize, there's a bouncing ball. Second baseman has a Barbary over the first. It's hard to think in laudatory terms of the product. <laughs> I Too think if there was an occasional box of Cracker Jacks that found no prizes for uh, the, the, the for the little Harry Carey many years ago. <laughs> you got that right. <laughs> and boy, when a box of Cracker Jack to me meant a lot of money. Here's a pitch bounce foul. That's the most asinine marketing I've ever heard of. One ball, one strike. These guys say, well, you, you sing about Cracker Jack. I said, did... I only sing it because it's in the song. Here's a pitch foul back. And I wouldn't be a bit surprised, even to this day, some youngsters who buy a box of Cracker Jack don't find a prize in the box. One ball, two strikes, two out. Well, if you're going to talk about our congressman being crooked, here's a pitch foul out of play. Why not talk about commercial products that don't do what they represent to do? They told me when they hired me it was a temporary job. Born and raised in St. Louis, and you can imagine the, the Cardinals were my favorite team from the day I could remember. And all of a sudden, the miracle of life, I'm broadcasting card games. I own the town. I've broadcast them for 25 years, and I thought they are going to give me a gold watch. And they gave me a pink slip. Then I went out to work for Charlie Finley for a year, and that's far for the course. Came to Chicago, and I was with the White Sox uh, 11 years, and now with the Cubs. Never missed a game, never missed a time at bat, never missed a half inning that I was supposed to do. You know, Chicago is such a marvelous city. Hey, we got some Chicago people. You know, uh, you never succeed in this business until you've had the experience of working with a terrible hangover. <laughs> Not until you've been able to come through with flying colors under those circumstances can you consider yourself a professional. Lord knows I've had more than my share of anger. There's a drive. Way back. It might be. It could be. And it Holy cow. This crowd is wild. This is Dwayne Clemens, former Bengals, Chiefs, and Viking, and you're watching the Sports Circus. Thank you. 
I believe there's a song that these guys made called Going With The Flow, and that's what we're going to do. We're just going to kind of go with the flow. In fact, we did that one already. So, in fact, sometimes we say in the wintertime, why is it so cold? So, guess what? Let's find out why it's so cold, according to Vante. This is them. Have a listen for just a moment, folks. Right here on our CBS, NBC, and Fox Sports affiliates. From coast to coast. This is the Sports Circus, brought to you by Vante. Watch the sun. Yes, I the way I'm shaking. I've got this feeling like I did. Long before oh, oh. good stuff that's high energy music from our friends at vante that just happens to be joining us right now here on the sports circus and of course an astounding round of applause for those guys all right we're here with rev jones on bass we're here with brian truck vocals and guitar and of course scott mcclellan who's had that look on his face in that last scene is like i'm gonna eat your head and that's the guys from Vontae. We're missing Chris Moore as well on drums. Where's Chris at? What's he doing? Uh, he had a, a studio session to do because he's, uh, he's a studio yeah. drummer as well. Yeah. Yeah. He well, had we, had to, we have to acknowledge everybody, of course. And, and, of course, all of our friends on all of our affiliates. We want to give a big shout out to our friends over in Honolulu on CBS Sports 1500 KHKA. That's home of the San Francisco 49ers, the New York Yankees, and the Alabama Crimson Tide. Right. Of course. Hey, you know, um, the last track you just played, there was another drummer on the album who played four tracks, and he's he's actually lives in Las Vegas. His name, he's a good friend of mine for the last 25 years, Jeff Totora. He plays for the Blue Man Group in Las Vegas. Oh, um, and he played on, on Why Is It So Cold and three other tracks on the record. Just right. for, just, just like got, the, got to make sure we shout everybody out. <laughs> yeah. Right, and Chris... I really wanted Chris to be here and he wanted to be here. He was kind of, he was pretty bummed out. He couldn't make it, but you know, life happens, right? So yeah. life happens. That's that life. And life he would, listen. And he would probably happen. boss us around the whole time because he's a mean guy. So he's a mean guy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> a growly voice. That's the voice of a bass player right there. <laughs> nah. Yeah, he, he keeps the whip on his belt strap, you know. And Chris yeah. is one Chris of right? <laughs> Yeah. Chris is like the nicest guy you'll ever meet. You, you see yes. him, he's all tattooed. Ah. And he's like, hey, how are you? I got it right. Yeah. I'm going to rip your head. <laughs> That's good stuff. <laughs> Hey, listen, I, let me, let me uh, throw out a quick shout to some of our stations here because we want to make sure we acknowledge them, too. Of course, all of our friends, like I said, at CBS Sports 1500 over in Honolulu in sunny Southern California. Big hello to our friends that may be listening in on CNBC and NBC News right here in Las Vegas, Magic 97.9 FM. And, of course, over in Atlanta, WDJY 99.1 FM, WAUD over in Auburn, Alabama, that, of course, home of the world champion Atlanta Braves. And, of course, our friends over at 107.1 The River 
gets to listen to some good rock and roll music in Louisiana and Mississippi, right over there, and their sister station, 104.7, The Gator. And, of course, all of our Cox Comcast Spectrum, Frontier Wild Cable TV, Hotel TV, everybody streaming. Make sure you also like, subscribe, and follow, and check out Vontae Band. By the way, Rev, let me ask you a question on the whole social media side. Right. So oh, look, there's Brian's holding up a CD. Let's let's see the CD real quick. Of course, I'm I'm ADD. So let's see that CD once again. Let's see if he can show that up. There it is. Vante. Where can we find that, Rev? Uh, anywhere that you find music, you will find. Anywhere you find music. Yeah. All right. Well, that's good mm-hmm. stuff. OK, so. <laughs> yeah. All right. So you can get the physical CDs are available on Walmart.com, TowerRecords.com, Amazon. And on. Tower Records, Scott, did you ever think that you'd see like Tower Records stores kind of go away, generally no. speaking? Not really. That, that was kind of a thing that was, I remember seeing them all over like in Hollywood and everywhere. Yeah. yeah. It's, no, it's maddening to imagine that they could just kind of go away. Yeah. Well, it's, that, you know, it's weird is that the whole Sunset Strip is just slowly disappearing anyway. It is. And when I I take my wife there and I start showing her where stuff was and she's like, oh, right. You know, it's like now there's a big buy rise. I think they're fixing to do that to the Viper Room, too. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, uh, last time I was, I was there six months ago or something, I was over by the Troubadour and I I think it's it's either gone or about to be, you know. Yeah. So right. it's got it. It all started when they took the Marlboro Man down. Went downhill. All right. Well, we don't need tower music. You know, we don't yeah. need. Yeah. Pretty soon, the whiskey and the rainbow will be gone, and there'll be nothing, nothing left there. Don't say that. All right. So, so Scott, you look pretty relaxed over there. Think about, think about how things have changed in Southern California over all the years, just in Long Beach and in the music scene itself, and going to the clubs and whatnot. What has been the biggest? change that you have seen just in the LA scene for music and going to places like the whiskey, like Rev was talking about, et cetera. And the Troubadour. Well, I mean, it just seemed back in the day that, you know, music was praised a lot more for new creative artists that would come out of the box. They'd write these great songs that everybody would buy the album and they'd listen to it all. And it just seems like those days are over. It's a lot of digital downloads and, uh, Another thing that troubles me is like, you know, I, I do believe that song video killed the radio star in a sense. Um, right. Everything. It, it's all changed. Like, you know, it, it, it's all digital downloads. Like even Tony Martin said one time in an interview, how like back in the day, you'd have to grab the needle on an album and move it, you know, to get past the song he didn't like. But so it was such a pain in the butt. They just listened to the album. Then they'd eventually like that damn song because, uh, you know, it would just play through the whole thing. And now you can just skip, 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 you know, and it, it, you miss a lot when you do that on an album. In my yeah, that, that makes a lot of sense. I mean, look, the music scene in Las Vegas is actually getting better. And so, Brian, maybe you could speak to what it's like, of course, for all the years and years you've played the music scene in Chicagoland. And, you know, you're, you know, I'm from Chicago. If I say Chicagoland. Yeah. I, you know, I've, well, I've played Chicago. I played everywhere. Um, and, uh, you know, back in the day, things were all, they were a lot the same from city to city. Um, you know, you could be playing Bogarts in Cincinnati or this place or that place. Um, I would say now, like what Scott was touching on, um, there there has been a mentality that's moved away from the the album mentality, whereas you would listen to a, a, an album in its entirety, or you know, you'd go out and physically have something that you could hold, right? Um, and you would listen to the whole thing. There was concept, conceptual artwork involved and all that kind of stuff. Right now, it seems to have swung more towards like the single mentality. Of, like we're going to put singles out, put a single, single, single. And there's just so much. And that's not that there's not talented people out there. There's so many unbelievably talented people that I watch video clips or watch this and this and that from the problem is now it's so accessible and so it's almost gets, it almost waters it down in a sense. It's just, I don't think human beings honestly were meant to interact this much all the time. <laughs> um, I agree. Making yeah. people a little nutty, you know what I mean? So, um, 
But as far as like now, there's aspects of it that make it great for songwriters and musicians, right? There, um, you can uh, you can get your stuff out there a lot easier. You can produce your own stuff and get it out there and everything. But you know, it's give or take. I mean, the, the ways the old thing. At least Amoeba is still in LA, right? That's that's still there, isn't it? Yeah. The record. Yeah. Well, that was yeah. always. A good, but like Tower Records, uh, like we had Crow's Nest out here. We had. Uh, what else do we have out here? Rose Records in the Chicagoland area. Oh, the Chicago right. area has, has switched a lot to primarily cover and tribute stuff. I mean, it really has. I see the, the original stuff starting to creep back in, but it seems to be a much tougher sell than people going out to see live music that's, you know, either cover or tribute stuff. So that's one thing I noticed for sure. Yeah, and, and I'll tell you here in our last 30 seconds of the segment, as I look at this, I say, you know, just uh, Scott, you made a great point talking about picking the needle up when you were when you referred to that, because people have ADD and they'll go ahead and go through, you know, uh, their social media so quickly. And and before you know it, they've already seen everything they're supposed to see. And I'll tell you what, when we come back from break, we're going to talk a little bit more about that with the guys from Vante. And this is why is it so cold? Back here in a few minutes on the circus. Don't go anywhere. Okay, guys, I'm break. I'm just going to let this one play out, okay? Okay. Attention business owners, you and your customers are listening to this commercial right now. Face it, every business needs customers, even yours. The Sports Circus is a primetime nationally syndicated program that's carried on ABC, NBC, CNBC, and Westwood One News affiliates, plus CBS, Fox, and NBC sports affiliates across North America with coverage from Hawaii to New York. Also, the Sports Circus is available to the 180 million subscribers on iHeartRadio, and the Sports Circus gets about 4 million website visitors per month, which could click through your website and bring sales. The Sports Circus provides great content featuring celebrity guests from sports and entertainment to our audience every weekday, which your company could greatly benefit from by increasing your visibility, foot traffic, eyeballs to your website, and calls from potential customers. Call us right now at 702-799-9935. Again, 702-799-9935. Or email us at info at thesportscircus.com. That's info at thesportscircus.com. Drive your sales today by advertising with the Sports Circus. That's the sound of sizzling, dry-aged USDA prime Wagyu and Angus steaks from UppercutChops.com. They're best-in-class filet mignons, New York steaks, and the king of all steaks, the tomahawk and cowboy cut ribeyes are the best in the business. Even their prime Wagyu burgers will likely be the best you've ever had. Browse the full selection of steaks and chops at UppercutChops.com from the comfort of your home or on your mobile device. UppercutChops.com delivers all-natural, dry-aged USDA prime Wagyu and Angus steaks and chops directly to your door. Without the hassle of going to the grocery store and fight crowds to pick from a small selection of average at best meats with injected steroids, fillers, and coloring added to look good. Find out what's for dinner at UppercutChops.com or call 702-799-9935 That's 702-799-9935, 702-799-9935 or make your selection directly at UppercutChops.com. So, you want to be in show business. Do people tell you that you're really funny, you have a great personality, and you should have your own talk show? Many of us have been told that, but we don't know how to get started. It's easier than you think. Let the pros at Cali Vegas give you a free talent evaluation. Call 949-445-1119 and learn how quickly you can create, produce, and host your very own talk show. Imagine not having to sit in traffic every day, commuting back and forth to the same old boring job. Get started in television or radio today with your free talent evaluation from Cali Vegas. Call 949-445-1119 or visit them online at calivegas.com. Make your dream come true today and create your new career and learn how to become a television or radio star with the help of Cali Vegas. 949-445-1119. Call now. Hey everyone, Dave Jackson here, ESPN Rules Analyst on ESPN Hockey, and you're listening to the Sports Circus. Oh, 
Welcome back to the Sports Circus. Rock and roll version with Monte. Here live from Las Vegas on your favorite CBS, NBC, Fox Sports affiliate, as well as all of our independents. Thanks for joining us across the country and across the globe. As a matter of fact, we have the guys from Vante with us, and that would be Brian, Scott, Rev. And, of course, Rev's got some interesting mask on. There it is. It's the – you look like a baseball. <laughs> Doesn't he look like he's laced up like a baseball? <laughs> <laughs> don't hit me don't hit me <laughs> that's great stuff all right so master we have, yeah. we have brian truck vocals no, not- we have scott mcclennan who is just chilling over there who plays guitar you probably just saw the videos yes and then of course rev just disappeared looking like a baseball or a football laced up and i'm not really sure where he's at but he'll be back here in just a minute and of course this is a sports show but guess what you listen to what stadium music as well and so these guys if you haven't already heard them, check them out at VanteBand.com. That's VanteBand.com. You've probably seen them climbing the Billboard charts as well. Number 18 and climbing. They're ascending quickly. So make sure you make sure you check them out and you check them out. So back here with the guys. All right. So in the last segment, buddy, I don't, I don't even know where the hell we were. Where did we go to? Where were we? We were on a record. Oh, we yeah. were Skipping, right? The records. That's great stuff. And and Scott, you made a, a tremendous point when you said you're having a discussion. And and I had said that the people will scroll by things really quick on their social media because they have ADD or whatever the hell it is. I don't know. They can't focus on right. stuff. But you made a tremendous point that you have to pick the needle up and move it to the next song. Yeah. And guys, how many out of all of you are guilty of scrolling through things quickly on your social media? Brian, start with you. Oh, absolutely. It, well, it all depends. I mean, yeah, if I'm, if it's not, it, not my interest uh, perspective, and I'm just kind of like, shoo, shoo, shoo. yeah, I mean, most definitely. But usually with newer music, I, I, don't, I usually try to take the time to listen to at least some of it. I'll go to YouTube and stuff, but then there's only so much time in a day. Like I said, there's so much information out there that it's impossible, right, to, to take it all in. Yeah, I suppose. It, it certainly can be a little bit impossible, but then again, it's all about focusing, right? And so, Rev, whether you're wearing a mask or, or a helmet or whatever you were just wearing, it doesn't matter. But you're still, like everybody else, going through your social media, et cetera, et cetera. And then you finally see something you like. And, and to Scott's point about you can't necessarily just pick up that needle and move to what you want. I guess you could point and click on it, whatever. Yeah. But part of the energy of what people typically do is they, they're constantly scrolling. They're looking at their phone. Yeah. Right. So, so here's my phone. Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm doing this kind of thing and everything's kind of blazing by. Right. So we still we yeah. see stuff blaze by. It's like we miss everything, don't we? Oh, yeah. Well, oh, I yeah. have to admit that I, I've been guilty even with uh, vinyl when I was growing up and I was listening to uh, John Lennon. Oh, no, it was double fantasy. If you look at the piece of vinyl right now, every other song looks like it's never been touched. Oh, uh, yeah. I skipped every one of her songs. <laughs> well, I've been, buddy, I've been, I, uh, I gotta tell you, I would have probably <laughs> done the same thing. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> got a monthly with, the exception of, with the exception of one song, Kiss, Kiss Me Love. Tony Levin's bass line on it is incredible. So yeah, I used to listen to that. One. But the rest of the I vocals, skipped. right? <laughs> no. Kiss, 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 kiss me love. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's my favorite. I, I still like to, I still like to uh, like I'll I'll put a playlist on when I'm working or I'm out of my wood shop or I'm doing some remodeling or whatever I'm doing. I always like to I'll play a long playlist on something and I usually just let that play through. Sometimes it's an indie playlist, other times it'll be based off of like Queen or somebody, and then they build a playlist around that, and I let those play through. Um, I tend to listen to a lot of. Yeah. Town stuff too when I'm working. It's weird. So <laughs> yeah. But yeah, it is it is that that is missing though. I mean, when I grew up, if you bought a set or an album or whatever you bought, you would listen to the whole thing. Right. So, right. It didn't matter. There'd be you would learn to songs. like those songs, even if you didn't yeah. like them. Well, for right. B side, it's okay. I mean, you yeah, you just you just knew, all right, well, you know, I don't like this song, but you'd still listen to it. You know, there was still something cool in those songs, you know, and it didn't matter 
Like, I mean, when I was, I remember growing up listening to uh, Night at the Opera Queen and all of those songs that are in between that are so not rock, you know, but I go off to work on Monday morning, you know, all those <laughs> fun songs. I'd listen to all of them because it makes that whole album. Right. It, it's the story. It's like, if you watch a movie, you get to a part, oh, this is boring and you skip through it. Well, you're not going to know what happened in the movie. You know, and I think music is when somebody puts an album together, I think it's that way. They, you know, they purposely put this song after this song, you know, because of whether it was written that way or if it's just how when they listen to it. Wow, this goes and this goes, then this goes. There's something beautiful about it. And the problem with streaming is everybody, ah, they just listen to their favorite song of everything. And by doing that, you miss out on so much good stuff. You know, I mean. Some of the bands that I would yeah. never, ever have liked, uh, I ended up hearing a song that I liked, you know. Okay, yeah, so I, let, Scott, I, let me ask you a question. Hold, hold that thought, Brian. Scott, oh. when, when you're putting together a playlist for, let's say you're releasing an album, let's go back in the time machine when they actually had regular 33s, right? Or if you're, you're putting your playlist out for your old cassette tapes or your 8-tracks or whatever, for a new album with maybe... 11 or 12 songs on it. How do you put these together? What, what is the, what is the goal? Obviously the goal is to keep them listening, but is it speed, slow, medium speed, slow? How does that work? Sometimes songs tie together a certain way and they, uh, they'll sit back to me. It's like, you you'll kind of like start off with a song, like a, you know, a pretty heavy hitter, you know, and then you'll come in and sometimes go up with a song with groove. Just depends depends on how it sometimes they just groove together better. I mean Brian kind of did that on this album and he made that all come together to where it worked out fine, in my opinion. Speak yeah, to that. The, order, the ordering of it was definitely, man, I went through a bunch of different orders in my head and I kept shifting it around on Dropbox. You know, yeah, you but you're right, Sal. It's definitely like like Rev was talking about, um, the uh I'm nothing on the one on the two, the better, but I think he does that a little bit better. So, <laughs> right, after, right after that comes in uh in the Roger Taylor song, right? I'm in love with my car. I can't even imagine another song coming after that, right? Yeah. Right. It's just, yeah. And, do, 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 da, 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 da. it's just and that's that was the beauty of the album. And then that format was was yes, they most definitely it was definitely a contrived thing saying, you know, we, we want it to flow a certain way. It's gonna be heavy here, it's gonna dip down here, and, and maybe even lyrically it helps tell a story across the whole thing, and the whole album itself is conceptual. So yeah, they that that gotten, that's gotten really lost, you know, in the shuffle here, unfortunately. But you could still do it. I mean, we, we were going to do like eight songs at first that ended up being 14. And, you know, people were telling us, people don't do that anymore. And I'm like, what people? <laughs> what do we, first of all, right, Scott, we were like, we don't care, right? Isn't that what we said? We're no. like, we don't care what most people are doing. We're going to do what, what we're doing. And that's just how it is, man. <laughs> do what you want to do. Guys, the reason the reason I, I mention this is for the same reason you have analytics in sports, right? And you say, okay, if as as a former pitcher, that's what I used to do. And I say, all right, I know that this guy, after a couple of fastballs, you're looking for something off speed. Well, and so essentially, I know I could probably get that guy out if I throw him something that he's not expecting. But the problem is in music, if I'm listening for maybe uh tempo right and i want tempo and then you crash and burn me with something that's half the rate i'm like man i'm going to skip over that in a second so essentially you can hurt the financial analytics of your own album if you don't order it right in my opinion rev what do you think about yeah. that oh yeah i i agree i mean and that's i think that's part of what's has shifted too with uh you know being able to you know move stuff around i mean it's funny back in the old days of vinyl if you're you set up your two sides, you had to put anything that was bass heavy early. But the groove is deeper, so when you get to the smaller part of that piece of vinyl, you can't have the heaviest, you know, bassy song at the end. So people used to alter, you know, the orders of how it was for that same, you know, it, it's for the same reason. You don't want to hurt the product, you know. So nowadays, because everything is streamed. It's kind of the same. A lot of times, 
force all the songs they think that are good in the front and then the songs at the end uh but i think it actually hurts in a sense too because you know you don't get past those songs you know and right. I, I think if a song's good even if you're you know wanting something that's you know if you're listening to pantera and you're wanting that and all of a sudden cemetery gates comes on you're still gonna listen to it Right. Tell you what, folks, we're going to go to a break here. We're going to go out on break with Watch the Sunrise. We're going to continue on with this. We started out the segment that way. We're going to continue on with this. Back here with Vontae, the band. Check them out at VontaeBand.com and check out that new album. That's good stuff. Great music. Back here in a few minutes on the Sports Circus. Don't go anywhere. Hey, hey, hey. I don't know what the big deal about Cracker Jack is. Did you ever go and buy a pack of Cracker Jack thinking you're going to get a prize and find no prize <laughs> in the box? Here's the pitch. That might not sound important to some people, but when, you, when you're a little kid, especially from a humble origin, and they cheat you out of a prize, there's a bouncing ball. Second baseman has the Barbary over the first. It's hard to think in laudatory terms of the product. <laughs> I Too think if there was an occasional box of Cracker Jacks that found no prizes for uh, the, the, the for the little Harry Carey many years ago. <laughs> you got that right. <laughs> and boy, when a box of Cracker Jack to me meant a lot of money. Here's a pitch bounce foul. That's the most asinine marketing I've ever heard of. One ball, one strike. These guys say, well, you you sing about Cracker Jack. I said that I only sing it because it's in the song. Here's a pitch foul back. And I wouldn't be a bit surprised, even to this day, some of the youngsters who buy a box of Cracker Jack don't find a prize in the box. One ball, two strikes, two out. Well, if you're going to talk about our congressman being crooked, here's a pitch foul out of play. Why not talk about commercial products that don't do what they represent to do? That's the sound of sizzling, dry-aged USDA prime Wagyu and Angus steaks from UppercutChops.com. They're best-in-class filet mignons, New York steaks, and the king of all steaks, the tomahawk and cowboy cut ribeyes are the best in the business. Even their prime Wagyu burgers will likely be the best you've ever had. Browse the full selection of steaks and chops at UppercutChops.com from the comfort of your home or on your mobile device. UppercutChops.com com delivers all-natural, dry-aged USDA prime Wagyu and Angus steaks and chops directly to your door. Without the hassle of going to the grocery store and fight crowds to pick from a small selection of average and best meats with injected steroids, fillers, and coloring added to look good. Find out what's for dinner at UppercutChops.com or call 702-799-9935 at 702-799-9935, 702-799-9935, or make your selection directly at UppercutChops.com. Hi, this is Tom Dreesen, and you're listening to The Sports Circus with my pal, Sal. And no one does it better. Thank you. 
Nice. And it's this is the circus, and we prove it every day, folks. You never know what the hell's going to happen here. We don't fix it in the mix. Hell, we had to do the whole first segment all over again. Why? Because I messed up, and that's what I do. I'm an expert at it, if you know what I mean. <laughs> Anybody that watches this show, they already know that. All right, a big welcome back to everybody listening in on all of our affiliates, CBS, NBC, Fox, 97.9 FM right here in Las Vegas, hotel television in over a half a million rooms, gaining 4 million impressions per hour. Imagine that, folks, 4 million. And by the way, it's to all the right audience, right? People that could do what? Buy goods, services, and downloads, right? So we can't forget that one, right? Maybe download some music from Vante. All right, so the guys are back here, and we've got one segment left, and we left off. I thought the last segment was pretty cool, talking about analytics, right? Because sports has analytics. It's a sports show. But we think of the financial analytics of the order or maybe the misorder of an album layout. Now, you probably have the same thing in concerts, too. And so, Brian, I want you to speak to the idea if – Playing the wrong songs when you open and close a show, or when do you lose people to the point where maybe they're like, ah, you know, that was really cool. I know I can only stay for the first show or for the first 15 minutes of the show because they're going to play all the stuff I don't like in the last 15. How often do you mix it up? All the time, especially if you have some, say you've got some more ballad numbers that are slower. Yeah, you definitely don't want those all grouped together because of the yeah, so I mean, people will burn their lighters out. They'll have no more lighter yeah. fluid, right? You definitely, you, it definitely has to be. Yeah, the show is definitely, and then it's thought out to the point where you know you've got peaks and valleys, and then maybe it towards right. getting and it goes builds back to a crescendo, and it stays, you know, and then wow, bam, you got to hit them over the head at the end. Yeah, it's all about timing, right? And yeah. he, so, Scott, from from your side of the ledger, when when you're out there tearing it up, because that's what you do. We've seen you in the videos. Everybody that's been watching the show, somehow I figured out a way to kind of show the videos. Hopefully the audio came through okay, and if it didn't, I'm sorry. Nonetheless, that means you'll have to go to vanteband.com and check them out. And, of course, check out all those videos and make sure you like, subscribe, and follow there too. But, Scott, from your side of the ledger, when you're up there – just tearing it up because you say you could play at any rate. You like speed, right? You're good at that. How do you dial it down mentally to play something slower when your hands are used to literally going all over the place? Well, basically when I do it, um, I like uh, to slow it down. When I hear a good groove, I kind of let the music just flow through me at that point, and it, and it keeps the adrenaline pumping. Uh, once I hear that groove and a beat and I see the crowd moving, I mean, it all speaks for itself. It's just like a natural high, and it just works that way for me. Um, I see, I feel the people, you know, and then I feel the music and the groove. I hear a good bass line. I hear the vocals humming. Uh, my ears are very well in tune with what's going on around me, and you have to be when you're a player live, of course. So. Right. Okay, so, so Rev – I'll go back to an experience that I had mentioned at the top of the show when I saw you play locally here in Las Vegas – and you're, mm-hmm. you have an incredible stage presence. People are remarkably entertained, but you're also, it's your style of playing too. How do you keep that from taking away from your front guy? Um, or do you even worry fortunate. about it? Well, no, I, I, everything I do, it's, it just kind of, uh, those things kind of happen, you know, uh, but I'm very aware that, you know, no different than when it, playing with Leslie West, I, you know, he's looking at me, wanting me to jump around and act stupid, you know, but at the same time, I'm like, well, I don't want, you know, I don't want it to look like I'm trying to draw the attention, you know, and cause it's not, it's not about that. If you're into somebody, you know, it's, if you go to see somebody play and somebody's jumping around over here and you don't like that person, you're not going to pay attention to them. And if you are, and you're going to let it hurt your experience, then you're an idiot anyway. <laughs> <laughs> you know, if I, go to, I go to watch somebody and you know some some guys over here are doing you know distracting me i'm not going to pay attention to him i'm going to keep watching you know and you know so but it's but it is that i mean there's times when you know you've really got to kind of lay back and you know but at the same time you know it's like a good example is when after leslie had lost his leg and then he was you know 
he was in a wheelchair on stage. So those first couple of shows, I tried to, you know, not really move around, you know, and he got on me about it. He, you know, he's like, well, if, if they're watching me, they're going to be, bo- you know, they're going to be bored. I'm sitting here, do your thing, you know? And well, so now that that's an interesting dynamic, Scott, I want to go back to you on that because a lot of people will focus on that lead. Right. And they'll say, all right, maybe when it comes time to your time and maybe you have your solo, whatever you will walk up to the front of stage. But what about if you have hypothetically out of all the people that you've played with, what about the egomaniacs that may be on the mic and they want to be front and center all the time. Do you have to kind of fade back even when you're playing wildly and everybody knows it's you? Have you ever been in that situation? Um, I don't think I've ever had to deal with that too often. I'm, I'm kind of like Rev. I mean, the moment happens when it happens and, um, everybody I've worked with has been very good people. I'm fortunate with that. Um, never had a guy that was running around saying it's me up front and you stay in the back. I never had that problem. Okay. So Brian, as the front guy, how many times have you've had a situation where you're like, just stay back. Let me do my thing. Cause either a, you're distracting me or B you're taking the crowd into a different direction. Have you ever had that experience? Never. <laughs> no, never. For me, I'm just like, everybody do, do what you're going to do. Cause when the moment hits, you don't want people going, Oh, maybe I should. Oh, no way. I want everyone to, to be free to just, man, cut loose when you're feeling it. You know what I mean? I used to, I used to jump around and do a lot more stuff on stage. I then I probably could now. I mean, diving, running from the, from the drum riser, uh, like diving over the security breach pit area into the crowd and, you know, body surfing all over and, and just, and, you know, jumping from stuff and falling and <laughs> cutting myself and stuff. Yeah, I mean, you, I used to be pretty wild on stage, but um, yeah, I would. I've never been in the situation where I felt, oh, hey, you guys need to. I mean, first of all, it's just not me anyway. Um, I'm like, yeah, it's like a, it's kind of a whole team thing. Yeah, I don't want people. I definitely don't have to be like, hi, it's just it's me up here. You guys just stay back. No, no. I would say if I was like that, that was they they shouldn't be playing with me. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay. It's- All right. So Brian, go back to the diving thing. How many times, if ever, have you, you've dove into the crowd and either a, they didn't catch you or you fell. Well, there was always so many people that it was, that was kind of impossible falling. I mean, they'd all have to, it would have to be like the red sea where they like just parted at the last second. Well, Like in that movie school of rock, (laughs) right? When Jack Black dove out and then nobody caught him. Well, yeah, yeah. But I mean, we <laughs> there there was oh, so many bodies there always that they would kind of catch you and I I had a cord of wireless mic so I half the time I'd still be singing as I'm on my back and they're surfing me around it was quite kind of a trip it was great actually yeah <laughs> okay I used to I used to do the same stuff I actually we were on tour with Pantera and I dove into the crowd and. Part of the crowd was still was moving. So I started. I started going head first down, and all of a sudden, Phil and Selmo had grabbed my head and caught me from, and gave me a kiss and threw me back on stage. So <laughs> oh, sometimes, wow. it, sometimes it makes a better story. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> all right, Scott, le- leaning into the crowd, playing a solo or something. How many times have people interfered and or grabbed your guitar or something and messed everything up, if at all? I had a guy one time that stepped on my guitar pedals and kind of caused some issues. And uh, that almost kind of broke into a thing. <laughs> but I had to finally <laughs> back and he, he, he was getting a little, he ripped his shirt off like the Hulk and came at me. I'm like, is this really happening? <laughs> you know, I kind of flew off the stage on top of him, made it very clear that I wasn't playing around. So, <laughs> but uh you know, that was like the only time that ever really happened. Most of the crowds are pretty generally fun and they know stuff like that just kind of ruins the show a little bit. So he didn't think that through. And those, those Dean guitars are, are really quite pointy. <laughs> yeah, they can hurt you. <laughs> uh, hey, listen, guys, we, we've got literally a couple of minutes left of the program and I want you to plug everything about yourselves take 30 seconds each a piece whatever talk about the band real quick and brian since you're already on screen go ahead and start 
Um, yeah, I just want to, you know, keep pumping the release. Um, self-titled release, Vontae. It's, of course, backwards for me because I'm seeing this. Um, like I said, Tower Records, Walmart.com, Amazon. You can stream it on all the platforms, download it on all the platforms, iTunes, Spotify, all that stuff. Um, we're talking about doing some uh, live stuff, you know, coming up here pretty soon. So I guess sit on that and uh yeah all right that's good stuff scott hey, man, give me 30 you... seconds what do you got yeah well basically you know i'm glad that Vontae is coming around we're, we're hitting the charts and uh like brian said we're going to be doing some live stuff we are streaming on all platforms you can find us anywhere you know i get a lot of people asking me where do you get your stuff i go just get online and look around type in the name you'll find us we're there and uh you know we'd love your support and I appreciate everybody that checks out our music, man. All right. That's good stuff. All right, Rev. What do you got? Well, as you can tell, I'm the king of shameless self-promotion. So make sure you go out and get the new Rev Jones solo <laughs> album. <in the> <laughs> that's and a great it's available, album. It's available everywhere that the Bonte album is available. I love yeah. that. At, at least I love the fact that it was a shameless plug. I, look, I do it all the yeah. time. It doesn't matter. Everywhere I'm going, look at he's wow. even wearing his shirt. Everybody on TV, it says Rev Jones Band, and it, it says Rev Jones. All right, so. RevJones.com. Rev jo- <laughs> all right. But, folks, first, before you do anything, make sure you go to VonteBand.com. Get all your downloads. Get your merch. Do you have T-shirts, hats? Where is it all? Do you have it? Yes and no. Because I, I could be wearing it, a Vontae shirt right now, but no, nobody sent it to me. Uh, uh, no. Well, I, I ran into some issues with the with the distributor, but I'm I'm remedying some things, and I got some other things in the work. Yeah, we have really great design and stuff. It's it's a really cool shirt, so that that should be work itself out within the next week or two. So, yeah. All right, really good stuff. Hey, I appreciate you guys joining us today here on the circus. Brian Trock, of course, Scott McClellan, and Rev Jones. And, of course, we're missing Chris Moore. But guess what? Next time you guys come back, we're going to have complete utter and complete mayhem. So make sure he comes back with you. And, of course, we'll see you next time right here on your favorite station. Again, Vontae Band. Check him out, VonteBand.com. That's where you can get everything. And maybe they'll be heavy your size in a T-shirt or a hat or some really cool merch or even a sticker. And also check out Rev Jones Band as well. We want to make sure that we plug everybody here. And, of course, this is the Sports Circus. It's a circus. We prove it every day. Thanks for joining us today. And we'll see you next time in about 23 hours on your favorite station. So until then, so long, everyone. Hey, hey. bye. Bye Bye-bye. small business owner or pursuing the dream of starting your own company? Do you know where to start or how to grow that existing business? The American Business Trust Company has the answers you need. The American Business Trust Company can help you start up with capital, business strategy, sales, and marketing, and establish your company with a physical location or an online presence on the internet. You decide. You bring the idea. The American Business Trust can help with the rest. For a free evaluation, visit them online at abtrustco.com. That's abtrustco.com. Or call them at 657-600-1876. That's American Business Trust Company, 657-600-1876. Call them today. They'll help your business right away. That's American Business Trust Company. Online at abtrustco.com. American Business Trust Company.